the way the prayer is done and we are moving to another set of appointments. I just praise the Lord for what we have experienced here. I am enjoying uh, visiting those uh, different departments, chatting a little bit with our fellow workers. It is an opportunity that we can have that. And maybe tomorrow I will be with the other departments and the administration, uh, administration offices. So I am enjoying. I visited also Elder Lyon this afternoon. He's 89 years old. When I was an intern, he was a mission president in Northeastern. Very energetic man, very choleric, very powerful. Now 89 years old. Those were the days with Elder Diaz, you know, all of those leaders. And I was intern at the time when I saw them. And I love to visit them now because they are in the last lap maybe of their life. We know not the hour about these people, but it's nice to know that uh, they are still around. You know, this afternoon, you will see that there is a revision a little bit of the topic that I am presenting. The one that I forwarded when I was pressured by the chaplain, you know. Uh, Victor has been, you know, texting me, Pastor, where are the topics now? So I sent him for the topic tonight something like blessings in uh, through the uh, through pain something like that yeah blessings in pain experiencing pain but the final topic is blessings through a hurting experience there is a difference you know like physical pain and a hurting experience in life it's not the intention that. I will shoot you a picture of my wife. Some of you does not know my wife yet. She looks like an Indonesian. But actually, the most important part of the story is the introduction of my sermon this afternoon, that beautiful lady between my wife and myself. You know, one time, by the way, she is a pure-blooded, uh, and before I proceed, you know, I'm sorry. I have a friend here 22 years ago, we met in Sadri in Osamis. I was the youth director of Osamis uh, Western Mineral Conference. And I think Danny also was there as the accountant, something like that. And I preached during the necrological service of his father. That was in 1991. When she came early today, by the way, she's not a, he's not a member of our church. He's just a neighbor. And he saw me somewhere in this building, maybe yesterday or today. And I'm happy that because of that, he decided to come, maybe uh, because this is a special program, he decided to come this afternoon. He's not a member of this church. And I'm happy to welcome my friend, you know, Brother Manolo Tamparo. Uh, can we welcome them by giving our, clapping our hands. Welcome, Brother Manolo. Now, I would like to officially invite you every worship time in this place. You are part of this family, actually. His family, his father died 22 years ago. And I preached during the funeral. And until now, he is still bringing the printed program of that service. Can you imagine that? bringing the program for 22 years of living in history. He could not forget that I was the speaker during the funeral service. And I'm happy to see him today. Because can you imagine that 22 years ago? Just like last month, I was in one congregation also in this uh, union. And I was preaching and a certain retired general came to me. Pastor, can you see the signature? And I saw it was my signature. You know, you baptized me in Tawi Tawi something like 20, uh, I mean, I mean, maybe 24 years ago. And he is also caring all the time 
his baptismal certificate. And Pastor, I am happy to see you. This is your signature. You are still my pastor until now. Although he is in different churches, he was in Mandaluyo, he was in so many places, he's a general of the Philippine Army. And I baptized when I was a young pastor. I think one of the first 100 souls I baptized after my ordination in 1988 and 1987. Things like that, we ministers don't expect that anymore. Just like Brother Manolo. It's really God's living that uh, we see it's happened here. But Brother Manolo, please don't forget, this is your family. Yeah, your parents are pure Seventh-day Adventists, the, the pioneers of the Seventh-day Adventists in Western Vietnam. The Nonois, the Tamparongs, the Meninas, all of this. He belonged to a very famous family in Western Vietnam. So I'm happy to see him. Now, he's uh, feel free to come with his church members here. They are part of the family of God. Welcome to this church. I'm happy to see you. Now, the story of this beautiful lady in front of us. You know, one time, I had a week of prayer in Universitas Advent Indonesia in, in West Indonesia, somewhere in Bandung. We have a university there, and I was invited to preach, I mean, to have a week of prayer. And uh, during the week, you know, I had counseling with the students. She was really a nurse in a certain hospital. But providential leading because of her, of her hurting experience, you know, a painful experience of her young life, she moved from North Sumatra to South Sulawesi area, especially in Bandung area, because she wanted to get away from home, get away from friends, to be away from all acquaintances, and she wanted to be in a place where nobody knows her. Probably not, diba? Her experience is really very sad because she was entangled with a relationship with a Muslim physician who is a doctor, a physician in one big hospital in North Sumatra and she became the fourth or the fifth lady of that physician. Di naman pwede sa minyuan because ang Muslim tamang raman sa upan. Ikalima naman si Adelina siya pwede minyuan. But they had a relationship that goes for about a year. And she could not take it any longer. She realized that in a Muslim culture, if you are number five, it's no longer reasonable. It's no longer legal. I was asking one time a certain Muslim, Inko, Nari, sa Muslim pwede ba sa kupat? Basta makaya. Ang siya, oh, ko, prayo ba makakaya mga maskin puno? Maskin lima, makakaya ba ng support? Ang siya, kung musubra sa kupat, Christian na ka na. <laughs> so, in this year, she was feeling that the relationship was illegal because she was number five. But according to her, they had a very sweet relationship, more than the relationships with poor ladies with that doctor. And that uh, doctor is a surgeon and uh, very famous also in, in North Sumatra. But she moved to North Sulawesi area and then moved to Bandung. And this time she decided that she would not be a nurse anymore. She studied another course and she enrolled in her own school in Bandung. When we had a way of prayer, I was presenting like, when you know the Lord, why will you linger and tarry? Accept the Lord, live your past, live with your present. And because of that, she came to my, to my counseling room and said, Pastor, can I have an appointment with you? at 12 o'clock midnight on Friday. Who you want to go? 
And she started relating her experience. I have this very sad story. I'm not sharing this even to the president of this university. I'm only sharing this to you because you are a minister of God. If there is somebody that I can count and I can trust on, is that you are the first pastor that I will trust in my life. I'm sharing this to you. This is my experience and I want to change course. I want to be a new person. I want to come to the Lord. I have repented. I will start a new beginning. Pastor, you baptized me, you and myself alone, at 12 o'clock midnight in the baptistry of this auditorium. Nobody should know. Even my dean, even the college president, and even my 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 companion in boarding house or in the dormitory. Inko, kuya ni yung baptism. Alas dosis sa gabi yun yah. Kaya lang luha pang kadaku sa auditor yung pagka kwan kaya ba? Inko, I will only do that with one request. What is that, Pastor? I said, can I pray my wife, the three of us? Only my wife and myself will know this experience. He said, okay, Pastor. You are a pastor. I will trust you. I will trust your wife also. She will be my sister starting tonight. It was Friday. So we baptized her. And she started confusing her. And she said, I will be your sister. I will be the sister of your wife. Now, she is an Adventist member of our church. But even the college university president did not know about the experience. I accommodated the request because I was not interested of the protocol of baptism. I was not interested of the the process that is to be done in times of baptism. But I was interested of her salvation and her soul. Very hurting experience. But it became a blessing for her life. And after that, she started smiling and she was telling, you know, now my feeling is different. I am a new person. I will never go back to my place for two reasons. I don't like to be seen by the doctor anymore. And I don't like to be seen by my parents because they are Muslims. If, I will, if they will know that I am already a Christian, still they will kill me. I'll stay out of my family, away from my family, but I am part of the family of God. Isn't it wonderful? You know what? The experience like that, I remember her life, and I am presenting to you today blessings through a hurting experience. And I can stop my sermon right here, and you will know that not all painful experiences is negative. God has his own way of allowing us to experience something, but God has a direction actually why he allowed that kind of thing to happen. You know what, today I had a sad experience, you know. The wife of Dr. Generato called up, his brother called up, and uh, I, Talked to them in the phone. I prayed with Dr. Hidarato in the phone. Actually, at this time, he is still in the operating room. For another round of operation. I don't know what's going on. But can we still say that things like that and things like this is one of the ways that the people of God can be even more closer to him? I was talking to his brother, Pastor, and he called me dad actually because I was uh, his godfather. And uh, he told me, why is he really like this? I said, you are a pastor, you know that, you know. We were talking in the phone. But everything that God allows to happen, there is a purpose. Actually, God's plan for the world is happiness, health, and eternal life. I always bring that to you. Because whatever you do, the plan of God is in these three things. Happiness for all of us. And that covers many things. Health that you can enjoy while you are working for the Lord. And of course, eternal life. 
If we are failing in this life, there is eternal life. And God wanted us maybe to be resting earlier or whatever, whatever is planned, it is God's plan. But things that I would like to bring to you today, when you are experiencing something like what I was sharing to you a while ago, or whatever painful experiences that you will have in your life, now three things that I would like to share to you. First, think of that inspiration which is only in your mind. The kind of inspiration that you cannot get somewhere. It's a, something that you can have it in your mind only. You will never go beyond the barriers in your own mind. If you think you can't do something, then you never will. And the battle is in your mind. If you are defeated in your mind, you already lost the battle. Will you believe in that? When you feel really very negative, and sometimes you will even decide to, feel, to, to abandon God, to blame God for everything. Sometimes you think it's unfair that you're experiencing like that. One time I was in the hospital and I was visiting my fellow ministers, a lot of them, and they were making jokes inside my room while I was in pain. They were making jokes to many of them, and I look at them. Really, these people does not really come here to sympathize with me, but I don't know what you think, you know. I don't know Dubai, you know. What I got out of it. I don't know Dubai, you know. 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 When I was a pastor, I would tell you like this one. When I was an intern at 23 years old, I would be in one church preaching one sermon during Sabbath school time. Because I had 22 churches to cover. So many churches. And it reaches it to 26 later. Church planting. Daddy knows that. In Sabbath school, I preached first sermon. Out of worship, another sermon. At 2 o'clock, I am another church. At sundown, I will be in another church. Four churches. Of course, whisper time. I was in another church. But some churches were complaining that they could not see the pastor. And then I was trying to, I was elated of what I was doing. I said, Lord, kung trabaho ay lang gino, o kung hindi nang gino tingan ay kumakulahi gino. Ano nga mga kung gipanis gino? O na lang akong statement. My mind was already negative. And I was already conquered by pessimistic, you know, uh, feeling. And I was already feeling uh, self-pity. And I was trying already to say, oh, what will happen to my children? They are still young. But I read something that one of the things that will help us is that the inspiration that you have only in your mind. The battle is in your mind. If you are defeated in your mind, you already lost the battle. If you don't think you have what it takes to rise up and say that you start, it's not going to happen. The battle is in your mind. Ang mga baba, naras to muna muna. And I was talking to Dr. Renato this morning. Ngayon lang siya, Oh, yes. Amen. More lang siya. It's very tired. Very tired. Ngayon mo kita ang mga niya. Ito to. Behold, group of workers in Davao Adventist Hospital. We are all praying for you every meeting time. Oh. Thank you. All right. I said, the whole working force in the South Philippines and churches are praying for you. Please don't surrender in your thinking. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. How is that? But I can imagine, you know, because I was there in that particular experience myself. You will encounter already a lot of negative feelings. Sometimes ko maghinda when I was in that particular experience. Ang ako nakita kung kaoban ng bautismo sa matangon pa ko, purus na mga backslider. Ang ako nakita ng ako mga siling ang purus na mga patay. Ang ako makita is a river without a water. 
Daka na kayo yung mga mahot na kayo na sa akong imagination ba? Negative na. But it's nice that people will inspire you. There is a song that runs this way. I need a prayer of those I love. Because sometimes even that person has already surrendered to a negative feeling. But God will hear the prayer of the prayers of the people. So it will help. That's why we are taught, you know, in so many ways that we need to do that kind of prayer. We call it intercessory prayer. Praying for other person. Because if I was not able to go through with that negative experience already, maybe really that was the end of my journey. It's Israel, if you think you have what it takes to rise up and set that new start, it's not going to happen. The barrier is in your mind only. That's what the scripture calls the stronghold. Your secret, your stronghold, your inspiration. Second Corinthians 10 verse 4. For the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. God really can help us. And that's why it is so important that we think positive thoughts of hope, thoughts of faith, and thoughts of victory. I was preparing this sermon this morning, trying to polish everything, and I received a call. And I said to him, thoughts of hope, Toto, Toto, I'm going to talk to you, Thoughts of faith and thoughts of victory. This time also, I told him, shall come to pass. Did you feel that in your sad experiences in life? You know, kami na yung mga anak. Kabalo na lang mo, kita na yung mga anak, di ba? Na yung mga experiences ng kabataan niya. Really, we are very sad. So ay magbalak ka kayo ta. Magbalak ka kayo ta. Mga bote ko sa kumagampo, you know, hindi nga pala akong mulabay na lang sabi. After the storm, the sun will still be shining. Di ba? And beyond, what is that? Beyond the cloudy skies, the sun is still shining. Honestly, I'm sharing this to you because I feel really the burden of the family. I tell you, I don't know. Because we are very close with each other. Uh, of friendship is just like my friendship with so many of you here. You know what I mean? So, with that one, I gave him the inspiration. And that's why it is so important that we think positive thoughts of hope. And it is in our mind. Yeah? That will be our stronghold. We will inspire people. And that is the purpose why we are here. Hope for the future of the promise to Jeremiah. Mature faith in the God who sees us, who sees us all the time. 24 hours a day, we have a God who is always at our side. Kinangan, wala na tayo reservation sa ato pag-alagan sa Ginoo. 100% have to serve the Lord faithfully. We know what is true. We know what is written in our Bible. Now, God is asking us to be always faithful to Him because He's a faithful God. Mature faith in the God who sees us through. Now this is story here. And I got this one from the book of Joel Austin. One of the best preachers in the U.S. He's not a celebrity activist though, but I got some good points in his uh, presentations. He was telling a story something like a father who was eating mangoes in a dark room. The story goes to see mangoes kept in a dark room under our parents' bedroom. It's like a foxhole and it was dark. And uh, there's a little trap door. It seems like if you're a little child, you don't like to go there. But he knows that his father was keeping the sweet mangoes inside the dark room. Ang mga papa ko sa ibibit ang mga mga pagkaroon sa itong anak during the olden days, but not now. Father, the boy was asking, are you there eating mingos in that dark room? 
And the father said, yes, come. Jump and I will cut you. See, but the problem of the boy is that from the outside, he could not see really the room clearly. Very dark, you know. But he could not even see his father inside. But he, the, the father was eating mangoes inside the dark room and he was saying, jump. Son, you jump. I am here and I will cut you. Pero ang bata, wala kasi makita. Okay, naahin sa kawas, kabatay mo, ikan mo sa hayan, pag sulod niyo sa room na ginawa mo, dark room, kung saan niyo makita, ikan mo sa hayan, kung tingin kita yun. But the father was saying, Son, jam, we will eat mangoes to be there here, inside the dark room. But the son could not see anything. It was very dark, thick darkness. Wala kasi makita. But the father was saying, Son, you jam, because I will cut you. But I cannot see you. You know, ng bata, how can I jump? I do not know. Asa to ba ang ako pag-uso? But you look at the story again. Came father's reassuring voice. Just jump, you know. Because I can see you. Without father fear, I jump into the darkness and caught in my father's strong arms. Grabe na napagtuo pagsalig sa bata, di ba? Can you do that? Kung ikaw, Ben, inom ka na ako ulit, tutuwa mo sa hit-hit na rin. Ben, lukso kay Salon Taka sa bagay na kung magkukain mo. Maduho ka siya na ako. I'm not his father. Uro yung inig-lukso niya, bulikay ko. Mo, mo. He could not trust that kind of trust 100% to me. Why? He is not my father. I am not his father. He's son by son. He's not just like Brandon, you know, in the Agar of Pools. Kapalo mo sa Sugilano. Nga mo ni siya ang taong abilidad kasi Brandon sa Agar when I visited this place, I was trying to imagine how he did it, you know. Crossing the cable from the side of Ontario to the U.S. territory of the Canadians of the, of the, of the, what's that? Kanang ako kayo ng Pools niya? Niagara, yeah, Niagara City, New York side. The other side is Ontario. That is very far, actually. I cannot imagine it is something like 200 meters, maybe? More than that, maybe 500 meters. And I now forgot about the distance. Dr. Diagono knows that. Brandon, you know, would be uh, trying to do exhibition every important day of Niagara City. My cable that is tied on the other side and also the other side of the country, Canada and the U.S. Ay mga wala ang nagsiparate sa U.S. and Canada. May panahon sa anibersaryo sa usang silibrasyon na mula tayo siya niya, magdalag ni Baro. May panahon na mula tayo siya mag-ilis o pantalon niya sa cable. Kung masipya, the force of Niagara, I tell you, it's really awful if you look at that. Balik-balik ko niya, magdalag ko yung baro, ipasubay sa kikol, kundi maglatay siya. Kaya niyo na? Ako kaya na po na maglatay sa kikol. Basta ibutan naman sa yuta ang kikol. Okay na siya. Pero niagara ang ako hagungan, makalilisa. So balik-balik siya, everybody clap their hands. Do you believe that I can really do it? Yes! We have seen it. You can do it. You can count me. Yes! You can do it. But Brandon, you know, Brandon, I tell you, London, I should say, London. I tell you, he was calling somebody. You come, you ride in the way, but... <laughs> and is that Charles Brandon? I think so. Come, and I will let you ride in the way, but I'll bring you to the other side. Why not you? It's good. Must give me One time, a little boy came out. I will. Kaya ang bata, yung kidala sa ating sal, yung yung ibalik, yung yung asay. And people are asking, How did you son? Why did you do that? You know, he is my father. I knew him. He is my father. I remember that story related to this story. Really, when we believe that the God of heaven is our father, you are not afraid to do what he wanted you to do. He is our father. Anyway. 
Whatever is his promise that is really true. Just like this one. Yah when he jumped to the darkness. He was caught in his father's strong arms. Yeah, he would be requested again to do that. He would do that. Because he was able to prove that his father really can be trusted. But I will not do that. Any one of you here, come, Pastor, you jump, I will kill you. How can I be sure that you can really do that? But if the Father in heaven will tell you, I will carry you through in my arms. I will carry you. I will help you. I will provide you. I will heal you. It's just a matter, you know, of claiming the promises of God. And this morning I inspired my brother. I was telling him to don't think that it is the end of the road because in my time I was mistaken. I was singing that I am coming to the end of the road. I was saying goodbye to my dear ones in life. But it was not true because, because it actually God loves me. He still has plans for me. And I will just follow the plan of God. Amen. Amen. Sometimes the future before us seems like a leap in the dark. But we can always hear our Father's voice saying, Fear thou not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. What a promise. It is a promise. It calls for mature faith to truly trust in the God who sees us every moment of the day. Ayaw mo pagluluha sa inyong pagalagyan sa Pinoon. Ayaw mo pagluluha sa pagsunod sa kalagdaan sa malalang kasunan. Ayaw mo pagluluha ng abisang tuon sa dagan sa ito pagkinabuhi. May pagsulay na naubukan and it will come in different forms and shapes, you know. And in a time that you don't even expect that to happen to you. But always be assured of His promises. And it calls for your mature faith. One reminder, things like this is easier said than that. I'm telling you that because I had that experience. And today, thoughts of victory is very important. For an ear is born of God overcoming the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, you know. Even our faith. You know that lady, that lady that I said to you a while ago. Di na yun siya magbulag sa amo from Friday, ano no no, Saturday morning until Sunday afternoon. Before our flight, we visit Asoy from Jakarta. In siya. Can I feel the same fellowship with the people here when you are going to say the people of God are people of God. They have the same attitude. Everyone is part of the family of God. And she was assured. And she was saying, and she was crying, why is only now that I receive this kind of assurance from my God? To be honest, my elder brother, he was calling me, Many times I already attempted to inject something because I feel that I was a totally damaged person and a hopeless young lady that I had no way of making myself a new. But the Lord has allowed her to experience that way so that his conversion to the church will be very meaningful. It was God's providence that she was brought by the Holy Spirit to that place. And without that experience, maybe, being a Muslim, she will not have a chance of becoming a part of God's family. It's good. She was not number four. Kaya number four pa siya kung comfortable na si Kaya. Kaya siya nga number four is okay. But number five is very really much illegal. That's why she wanted to live and did not like that kind of thing anymore. And that was the beginning of the changes of her life. A poor little boy story. My dear Jesus, he was praying, he was praying. Mother and I are very poor. 
But I know that you are very rich. Innocent prayer of a little boy. Look at this. You have told us that whatever we ask in your name, your Father in heaven will give it to us. You know what happened because of the needs of his life, he said. I pray that you will send my mother the money so that I can attend the Christian school. And I would like to be taught by Christian teachers. And I love you, Jesus. Thank you. And he put the mailing address. Going to heaven. Because Jesus is in heaven. Ang abot sa post office, bilang taos mga tao, kaluhoy ko ng bata. Ang address na yun sa heaven. So ilang dibasa ang sila. Kaya yung address na bring on sa heaven. Jesus, address, heaven. Kung saan pang deliver sa postmaster. And you know what happened? This uh, postmaster, you know, reported to a certain group, the Baroness de la Lipe, uh, a certain Moravian society that is helping the poor. Volunteered to pay the lads the entire way to school. God always says, but before that, paglantaw niya, because it was, the letter was delivered by a policeman. Pag-abli niya, di man ginawa ang amount niya, yung insaktong may bayan, insaktong yun ba, para kulang magamay. Yan ginawa niya nga po, ginawa sa sunod, ayaw ipaagi sa polis, may kuhaan niya. It's part of the joke of the story. But God always hears the prayer of faith and gives us what is best. Amen? When we meet our problems with simple faith in God's power, He will help us solve them. That little boy's story is a 